All right. Uh, appreciate y'all joining us. Thanks for covering our program and our players. Uh, great to get a win um, Saturday night at Georgia State against previously an unbeaten team um, that had, you know, has got a really good football team. So uh, going on the road was great to get, get the win in Atlanta. Uh, would like to, before I even get into the game, acknowledge our fan base, um, student section, our band, our cheerleaders. Man, the Trojan Nation showed up. It felt like a home game in Atlanta. Like, honestly, we were playing on the road um, out of town, but it felt like we were the home team because we, I think we had as good, if not better, fan turnout. Our band was outstanding. Um, cheerleaders were great. Like, just the, our, our, our uh, support um, made it a home field environment for us, quite honestly. I mean, we felt like we were playing in Troy. Um, so, great tip of the cap to them for showing up in full force. Um, uh, wrapping up that game, though, Offensive Player of the Week, um, Jabri Barber. Defensive Player of the Week, Buddha Jones. Special Teams Player of the Week, Jarris Williams. Um, job Takers of the Week, Defensively, Tyquarius Perry. Um, offensively, T.J. Booker. And then Special Teams Job Taker of the Week, Malachi Pegues. Um, the Service Award, uh, Nathan Harris, John Johnson Service Award goes to Casey Bradford, who's also – played the last couple games on special teams. You know, first two weeks we mentioned KC for being a job taker. Well, he's taking a job on a couple teams, and he does everything at a high level that he does. So, proud of him. Um, Corey McCullough, Spirit Award, Nick Trammell. Um, and then the Workout Warrior of the Week goes to Alex, um, don't call me Johnny Cash. All right, so uh, really proud of that group that all has represented themselves in our program well. Um, the good from the game, won the turnover margin plus two, which was a big emphasis for us. Uh, won the rushing yard battle against them, which is, you know, th that's something they do extremely well. We ran for 154. They ran for 104. Um, I thought our line of scrimmage play on both sides won the game. Um, in particular, I thought we improved offensively at the line of scrimmage like we needed to. I've made a big emphasis around it, our building, um, and – uh, we gave up zero sacks and, and allowed three tackles for loss, which against that team is a, a pretty good day. If we can continue that trend, which we need to, um, I think we can stay on schedule offensively and prove to, to, to be a good offensive football team. But that was a huge area of growth that we made and we got to continue to make. I thought we were more efficient than them in the past game. You know, we were 23 of 30 throwing the ball. Um, they were uh, 19 of 29. Um, and we threw for more yards as well. So I thought we were the more efficient passing team. Coming into the game, their quarterback was one of the most efficient passers in all of college football coming into the game. All right, and so that was a big deal. Total yards, we won 410 to 298. Um, offensively, we were 50% on third and fourth down, which is a big deal, 7 of 14. That's a great trend that we got to continue. Um, we were 4 for 4 on scoring opportunities in the red zone. Two of them, we had to get field goals in the first half. Disappointed, we got to convert those great drives into touchdowns um, to, to you know really sustain the momentum that we created there. And then defensively, we allowed them to only score in one out of three red zone opportunities, which is big with the two turnovers we had. The, the interception by O'Shea on the first drive after the blown assignment and coverage, and then the fumble that we forced, Buddha, and then Jade McDonald recovered. Um, <clears throat> things to clean up. Like I said, offense, we got to score touchdowns when we get in the red zone. Field goals ain't going to win it. Um, and then perimeter alignment, I thought we got to clean up some of our alignment things. There were a couple of things that we didn't handle formationally as well. And I thought um, we just left some things out there play-wise in regards to a couple of missed assignments in the past game, maybe at receiver um, and, uh, and those sort of things. Defensively, the big biggest issue we have to clean up. We had 23 missed tackles, um, which is which is atrocious. I mean, that's not good enough. Um, uh, so we we've got to get better there fast. And we gave up a couple of really cheap plays in the past game where we played poorly with eye discipline. The good news is that some of our better players, so I think they'll get it fixed quickly. But just lack of detail with where our eyes are at and getting a little bit too loose in coverage. Um, with with maybe some technique stuff, and then special teams, uh, you know, we're two or three at field goal. Um, had the one that hit the upright, um, and and 
think we'll get that corrected and cleaned up. Had the first kickoff that was out of bounds and gave up the fake punt, which put that one on me. That's not on the players. We were in a call where we should have stopped it anyways, but I could have put us in a better call um, and should have recognized it and tried to get them in a better situation there. Um, looking ahead, got a really good challenge this week. I think Arkansas State is a very improved football team um, from last year. They're probably as improved team in, in our conference. There's a couple of teams that are vastly improved, and they're one of them for sure. It's really, you know, the first two games didn't go the way they wanted them to. They've sort of flipped the script. Um, they've inserted Jalen Rayner at quarterback, number one. Athletic, dynamic athlete. Throws the deep ball very efficiently and effectively. Um, the running backs are both good. They, the two guys they play mainly, their O-line is extremely large. Um, they, you know, they're 330, 330, 315, 350. The small guy's 302, you know, so they're big. A um, couple of those guys, one of those guys we tried to get to come here and he went there instead. They're they're big and uh, and physical. Athletic at tight end, very versatile and athletic at receiver. Um, defensively, um, they do a nice job, uh, familiar with their defense coordinator's background. Uh, they're, you know, their edge rusher, number 92, um, is twitchy and athletic. They got great secondary players. Um, their linebackers are sound in what they do and very solid. I think 36, uh, Charles Wilkes, he gets them lined up and sort of organizes everything for them. And then the rest of their front defensively is big and they just they make you beat them. They don't, they don't beat themselves. And they're very active and athletic. In the kicking game, um, their field goal kicker has a career long of 56. He's hit a 53-yarder this year. Um, they do a good job in the punt game. They're, they're very sound in what they do, and they're dangerous, dangerous with the returners. Their slot receiver, number nine, returns punts, and their running back, um, one of their running backs is their kickoff returner, number two. And they both are uh, guys that are big plays waiting to happen when they get the ball in their hands. So having said all that, big challenge, great opportunity for us. Both teams are three and two. Um, a lot of respect for this coaching staff and this program. They've won five different – Five conference championships with four different head coaches in the Sun Belt. So this is a program that I think over the history of the Sun Belts in the upper echelon of the league, um, tremendous challenge. They're really hot right now. Um, we've got our work cut out for us. So open up to questions. Hey, John, it's Jamal with Montgomery. You mentioned the start that Arkansas State had to the season. Of course, everyone knows about the Oklahoma game. And then, you know, they lost to Memphis right after that. How hard is it? Uh, <clears throat> to overcome a start to a season like that where you maybe don't score as much and then you you, you string together three wins like they have? Yeah, I think it says a lot about the, the culture that um, Butch Jones has been able to create there. Like he, you know, you have some things go hard or go the wrong way and guys staying bought in and continuing to fight. I'm very impressed with that by them. Um, and then they've changed what they're doing a little bit. You know, like I said, they've inserted – uh, Jalen at quarterback, number one. Um, he has changed. I mean, it's like a different team. I mean, candidly, I, I don't really put a whole lot of stock in – and I'll watch those other games just to make sure I'm not missing anything. But it's a different football team when he's been in the game the last couple of weeks. And um, and so they're, they're a much improved team. Uh, I have a lot of respect for their staff and their program and – I think very highly of what they've been able to do the last couple of weeks after maybe having a rough start. So um, credit to them. I think they've got great culture built and they're a tough team. They play the game the right way. Hey, John, it's John and Dustin. Could you expound a little bit on the offensive line, what maybe it's doing better right now as opposed to say three or four weeks ago? Yeah, that's a good question, John. Um, so Blake Austin's playing left guard now, and we've moved Grant Betts back to right tackle. So there's one personnel switch there. The other, I would say, I think we're just we're simplifying some targeting things. I thought we were doing that may have been a little bit too complex. You know, um, we our system uh, is, is a good system, but at times I think we we've got to simplify things. And coaches sometimes we know more than we can teach. And what really matters, what can the players execute? So I think we've tried to trim down some things um, and maybe simplify some things in teaching. Um, you know, you go back and look at – and I, it's funny you bring it up because I just – in our staff meeting this morning brought up I wanted all our negative offensive plays on the entire year to be watched and go, all right, 
Is it player? Is it scheme? Is it identification? What is the issue? And I think uh, we're, we're playing better personnel-wise right now. I think we're simplifying what we're doing and trying to make things cleaner. Um, you know, I left the game Saturday, and I told our offensive staff right after the game, I was like, man, the, the pocket felt more comfortable for Gunner. The running backs, I think there was one, one or two plays at running back where maybe they had interference with an opponent behind the line of scrimmage, which, you know, early in the year wasn't that way. I mean, you know, the, the first game against Stephen F. Austin, we gave up free runners through the second level, from the second level of the defense way too often. And so I think we're getting those things cleaned up. It's about keeping your eyes up on second level run throughs and things. And so I think it's a number of things. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, you're better in week five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 than you are in week one, two, three, four at eliminating unforced issues. I can live with when a guy on the other team makes a really quality play and beats us. I don't like it, but I can live with it and we can fix it. What I can't live with is a guy's on the line of scrimmage, we just don't block him. You know, and we did that a couple of times earlier in the year. If that, that, that won't continue or um, everybody in our building will be tired of having to deal with me. So that, you know, don't, Troy doesn't need to beat Troy. And at least put a hat on a hat. We're hatting things up better. We're putting a hat on a hat and making the other team have to beat us instead of beating ourselves. And that's got to continue for us to have any type of success. Hey, John, it's Jamal again. Uh, every single week for the last month now, it seems like the defense has kind of done something to uh, the opposing team to, to maybe like knock them off of their average, their game. And, and this past week, it was Georgia State who averaged 37 points a game. He held them to seven. How much pride does that side of the ball take in being able to um, to stymie these, these opposing offenses that you go up against every week? Yeah, I think our kids on defense take great pride in their work. Um, you know, one thing I love about the culture of our team, those guys come in and watch extra tape, and they do every little thing they can to help give themselves an advantage. Um, and uh, so they're students of the game. And then I think, too, our defense staff does a really nice job of equipping them with the tools of understanding, hey, this formation, these are the things we have to stop. This is what to be on high alert for. Um, Georgia State presented some very unique issues with – they put the tight end, uh, I call him the sniffer when he's off the ball, it, in the A gap, the B gap, and the C gap, which a lot of people don't do. They line him up in the C gap area outside the tackle. They would insert him up in the line like he was an extra O lineman, which is a very challenging thing. And then athletically, man, those guys, the quarterback's an elite player and the running back for this league is a really good player. And to hold that outfit to 104 yards rushing was a big deal because they've been running all over people. Um, they take pride in that. And then – the turnovers were critical, you know. Um, so um, there's still a lot to clean up defensively. I was not pleased with the explosive plays in the past game. We gave up three chunk plays. One of them was called back. But that, you know, credit to Georgia State, they made the play. But quite honestly, when you don't cover somebody very well, you, they should make the play. And we didn't cover them very well. And that's something that's very uncharacteristic of us. I, I hadn't felt that way maybe, quite honestly, since the Alabama A&M game, my second game here last year was the last time I felt like we just didn't cover some things down cleanly. And that was extremely frustrating to me. Coach Nick Brooks with Dothan down in – or WTY down in Dothan. Um, you mentioned the big punt. Uh, your defense really responded well by um, getting off the field after three plays. Actually, I think they knocked them back further than what they were before the big punt. Just kind of talk about – the resiliency, you know, thinking they got off the field and now going back on to really getting the offense back on the field in three more plays. Yeah, we, we talk a lot here about, you know, our, our core values, attitude, toughness, discipline, and love. When it comes to attitude, we, we talk about demeanor, drive, and desire. And then we talk about our response to everything, no matter if it's good or bad, is good. Like, some bad happens, good. Some good happens, good. Like, who cares? And so um, – I think they had a great response there, and they came out with a good mindset. And you're exactly right. They ended up losing yards. We finished that, that drive after they converted, I believe, with Javon having the sack. And so it knocked them back, um, and it was a great response. It was really – they had created some momentum there. Um, it was 13-7 to 7 at the time, and that, that was really a big part of um, kind of – 
uh, keeping the momentum back on our side as as soon as they created a positive play, we were able to to stuff them out there, which is a big deal. And great, great job by our kids responding the right way. Coach, again, um, that second half, you outscored them 21 to nothing. Just kind of talk about not the adjustments, just but being able to wear a team down like you guys have been, I feel like, over the past two years and, and to be able to really take over in a second half. Yeah, it was 22 to nothing because we went for two. So, but no, um, I think, I think uh, you know, Adam Printergrass or SID does a great job of giving me stats and stuff. We, I tell people all the time when we're down at halftime, we got them right where we want them, because I think we're like six and three or something in games where we're down at halftime or so, something. It doesn't even make sense. I'm looking over at Adam for confirmation, but the we we've won a lot of games where we've been behind at half. All right, now I'd like to be up real big at half and be able to relax a little bit, but we play the game. I think we've won six games since since being down at half maybe or we're six and three down at halftime the last year and a half so when we're down at halftime you're gonna think i'm crazy but i tell our guys in the locker room all the time we got them right where we want them like this is we're built for those moments i feel confident in those moments now i don't want to be down very often but it's a four quarter game for a reason um i think our coaching staff does a really nice job of going in and going all right what's going well what's not going well how do we re re um, calibrate and reassess some things and then our kids respond I mean uh, I think they're built for four quarter games you know I, I, I remind them every week like we're going to make everything a four quarter game that may drive some people crazy but it means we got a shot to win every game and I want a chance to win every game and so that's our mindset it's how we practice it's how we approach things daily um, and our guys do a tremendous job of taking those adjustments um, that are made and really um, putting them into action. John, uh, your last drive of the game that ended in the touchdown, uh, it went 14 plays over eight minutes. How important was that drive to, to just not give the ball back to Georgia State, such an offense that could put up points in a hurry? Yeah, it was, it was critical. You know, we um, they knew we were going to run the ball a decent amount. We did take the one – throw down the field the CLU and they got the PI, which helped extend the drive a little bit too. Um, you know, I uh, thought Gunner did a nice job managing some things. We we cut some splits and brought some receivers into the core to maybe not give them edges. Um, but just really, you know, when you're up, we're up 21-7 there, they're using their timeouts at about three and a half minutes and they keep just methodically getting into the inside the 10 yard line and then right there at the end of the game, um, we ended up – it's fourth down. We ran the ball to go score. Really didn't, really didn't care if we scored as much. Just wanted to – I would have been fine if we had gone down at the one and made him go 99 yards with, you know, 10 seconds or whatever. We were just trying to make sure we – it was about the clock at that point. It went about the scoreboard. It was about continuing to move the ball. Now, we did take the shot down the field to see Lou thinking, hey, let's either get a P.I. or – they're going to be so aggressive, it's going to be a nice catch and we'll get the, move the ball down the field. But um, when you get in those situations where your offense can close the game with the ball in their hands for the last eight minutes, that's a really good way to finish the game. And is that the vision Coach. that you would like to have for your team, uh, to have an offense such that you can control the clock in a way like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you can run the ball and you can change the pace – and when you need to, when you've got a lead and you can win the four minute drill and run the ball when people know you're going to run the ball, that's, that bodes well for the opportunity to have success. You know, um, there's still a lot of things we got to improve upon offensively. Um, but I do believe our guys have confidence in, you know, our running backs are running hard, our O line's getting better, I think, each week. Um, and, and us finishing the game with the ball in our hands on offense has been something we've done well. Coach, last question I have. Um, you know, Jabri Barber was big this week. I feel like Kamani's been big in a couple games. Chris Lewis has been big. Deshaun Stoudemire, Fonte Ross. Just talk about having, you know, a guy any given Saturday be able to come up big for you guys this season. Yeah, we've, we've got a lot of good playmakers. You named a bunch of them. I think you can include Damian Taylor. Last week had a nice performance. Um, you know, I think Marcus Rogers and Landon Parker, their, their moment's coming. Like, I think their their time is about to come at some point here. Peyton Higgins has had some nice plays. He's not going to – he hadn't had maybe the crazy stat lines, but 
he's had some really nice plays in the season. Um, and then our tight ends, Ollie's made some big catches, and Deion Cray had the two-point conversion catch Saturday. I think we've got a lot of different pieces that have the ability to affect the game positively, offensively. And I think the more guys that step up, that helps um, each other. And I think the key to that, too, is like guys not being selfish and thinking, man, I got to get my touches. The, the whole thing's about the team winning and the, you getting your opportunities happen when you do the right thing over and over and over again. And, um, you know, I think that's a, a, a mindset thing. I think it's a thing that's hard. This day and age, everybody wants to get their numbers, but your numbers come when you're humble and you're selfless and your team first. That's when your numbers come. Um, guys that are usually worried more about their numbers than the team, they're not great for the team.